<clears throat> so this is the OB patient experience and patient engagement, the future is now. My name is Peggy DeZeno, and I'm a risk consultant for OB Consult. Uh, one of the things that I would like to just mention is that the patient experience is an area of focus in OB for, for the OB Consult team. Last year, we did a presentation on HCAPs and improving scores in the OB department. So this is actually a logical extension as we look at physician office-based patient experience. We worked with, uh, with Medstatix, uh, the company, to, pre to prepare the content for such a survey. And we thought you might be interested in learning more about this whole concept and uh, to learn a little bit more about Medstatix and their patient experience survey platform. And as a bonus, Doug Shand, who I will introduce in just a moment, will also provide some information on their recent work with OB patient engagement. So this is a, an exciting beginning to the new era in patient engagement. What you'll see here on the screen now is how we came together. And when we look at Metstatics, Metstatics, as you can see, brings a lot of resources in terms of the technology aspect. And OB Consult brings together the clinical resources and our content experts and patient safety uh, people so that as we start and physician and and reimbursement experts. So as we put the two together, we actually come up with a very interesting and unique uh, team. And as you can see, our combined team, uh, I'm not going to go over all of the introductions, but as I'm showing you the screen, you can see across the top are the our OB consult medical nursing patient safety experts on the bottom of the screen. To the right, you'll see our healthcare attorneys, our um, patient safety experts, and in the middle, you can all see Doug Shand, who's the sales and marketing professional with Medstatics, who's going to be our speaker today, along with uh, Scott, maybe on the line also, uh, who is the CEO of Medstatics. So we're in for a real treat today. I think we can, good. And one of the things that people have asked us is, is it possible that this patient experience can go beyond just the OB experience? And the answer is absolutely. So here you will see our content experts that, uh, who have contributed to the patient experience survey that's specialty specific. So we've covered a lot of the bases. Um, as we look forward, as we look forward to what's coming down the road, it's going to be very important that the OB or the specialty specific patient experience survey will be able to drill down to the patient experience because we all know that a lot of the, uh, what's happening is that physicians will be in re reimbursed based on their performance. So this is a very important area uh, and very exciting as we move forward. And now I think I'm going to turn the uh, webinar over to Doug. And thanks, Doug, for joining us today. Thank you, Peggy. And Scott is here with me. And we're thrilled to have him along. I think the way that we're going to put this together is I'm going to introduce uh, who we are, what we are, and the survey piece, and Scott will uh, explain what the new cutting-edge technology and the future is looking like. So we are here to improve patient experience, improving practice performance. And really, as a company, our objectives are here, uh, offering providers an in-depth analysis of patient information that they've never had access to before, and certainly, uh, at least at the specialty level, possibly at a cursory, much more general level, but not the way that we are uh, looking to the future for it. And thus, we're adopting a specialty specific approach, as you noted, uh, to data collection and true quality metrics. And we are going to touch on all of this. Um, and the other piece is now the patients are getting a voice. They are much more educated. Technology has enabled them. Uh, unfortunately, they're out there surfing the web for all the answers, which don't necessarily hold all the answers. But they do have the voice, and we are looking to arm them with true engagement tools to help you engage with them to obviously create a much better healthcare community and much better healthcare for them. So just as a quick background for everyone, uh, Medstatics, we've been around for uh, over 10 years. You can see we started in 2002, and we split off as uh, a company. But what had happened was initially we had done patient surveys all electronically for over 25 pharmaceutical brands. 
And you can see some of those noted here on the left, Genentech, Novartis, et cetera. And we also currently have, through our sister company, who has started all of these surveys, uh, clients such as American Express. We do all their food and wine, travel, leisure. Uh, we're doing all of Bridgestone, Firestone. Uh, and you can see any of these surveys you may have received from any of these car companies, et cetera. These are all done by our company. And electronically, we actually know this space very well, and our research is deep. And we're not just a, a company that has started a year ago or two years ago. And I think that's important for everyone to understand. We're looking to uh, really serve several uh, pieces of this for you, the provider. Number one, specialty specific surveys give you an easy online dashboard with real-time quality metrics. And this is something that's been absent out there in the, uh, in the world. True actionable survey questions, everything that we have in our surveys have been vetted through that team that you saw plus more in terms of experts. And what we're trying to do is ask <clears throat> questions that the you, the provider, and the practice can address, not just how well are we doing, but specific questions that then you can take uh, true action on. We measure locations, individual physicians, benchmarking, uh, the key piece of the patient engagement is what is developing through the mobile technology and is extremely exciting. The other piece for you as practices and the medical community overall is you have plenty to do. And thus we have made at least our solution, and we think one of the keys is uh, easy to implement and easy to use. Uh, we're trying to limit any expense and time on your part and drive right to data for you. And the way that we happen to do it in our particular case is very cost effective. Um, I know that there's been a lot written on this, but we are just trying to overlay a blanket that patient engagement has a very strong association with outcome and safety. And we know that enhanced communication uh, certainly leads to improved treatment, adherence, and medications that well-informed patients tend to have a much more positive outcome of their treatments or surgeries. Uh, it tends to reduce surgical interventions uh, because people end up getting more intelligent on the topic. They are engaging with their doctors about alternate uh, options. Uh, certainly, it helps them after post-surgery also improve functional status and emotional support. Uh, the more support you give them and that the doctor has as a relationship with the patient actually has been proven to improve their surgical recovery time and actually their recovery back to uh, as close to full status as possible. So with that, and you all probably are very aware of this, but we're just laying it out. The whole key with positive patient experience is trying to improve your retention rates, your referrals. Both of those directly uh, impact your bottom line. And that's important. Uh, key measurements for practicing individual physicians that you may not have had before so you can focus on uh, ways to improve your practice and, more importantly, the patient experience. There has been a lot of talk about the payers shifting to paying physician based on performance. And there, this is apparently going to be one of those key metrics that is going to be included in the equation. The equation is going to be different for different payers, uh, but they are looking at this as a real predictor of how they're going to pay the better physicians. Um, again, pay, better patient adherence to treatments and medications. And we have talked about outcomes and safety. There is uh, also, obviously, a direct correlation to the risk profile and your malpractice, that the more satisfied the patient and the happier the patient is with you and the practice, that they are much less likely to come after or sue. And the insurance companies, and in this particular case we're talking about the reinsurers, are very well aware of this, and we're in discussions with them as well about 
if they use our uh, patient experience platform, that then you as the medical practice and the providers should automatically start getting reductions in your malpractice insurance because they should be getting uh, less hits at their cap. So the, the fact is, it's a win for everyone, and it's so easy to do. Uh, again, benchmark by specialty and core, and more importantly, engage with the patient differently and better, unlike today. In our particular case, uh, we have specialty-specific surveys, as we had mentioned. Um, if you look at the right there, there is a general question that exists on some questionnaires, explanations the care provider gave you about your problem or condition. Well, if you rank that, that's great, but what do you as a provider or practice do with the answer to that? You're not quite sure what to do. In our particular case, in the OB setting, we start driving down to some very specific questions. How clear was Dr. Jones in explaining the appropriate weight gain you should experience in your pregnancy? Was this information provided in a respectful manner? Was Dr. Jones willing to respectfully review your desired birthing plan with you? These are the key differentiators to a practice and engaging with your patient. Basically, um, again, electronic technology, the future, uh, is here. Our history and our uh, company has become experts at delivering uh, electronic surveys, and we actually have completion rates of anywhere between 25 and 40 percent. And this is basically what an email would look like with a practice's name on it. Um, this is not a sales pitch. This is simply showing you what we what we do uh, as an email invitation. Um, and then, as simple as it can be for them to take it, which is specialty. Uh, specific approach. You'll see on the right, uh, OB happens to be one of our specialties that we're very focused on. And when I say specialty specific, we actually have our surveys created with 17 core questions that every specialty gets. And then we have very specific questions that the, again, the medical team and the experts that we've talked with uh, decided are critical questions towards patient satisfaction and helping that patient uh, get a better experience. Things that are different in the OB space than would be in the cardi cardiology space or urology. Um, in this particular case, these questions happen to do with bariatrics. I had a good understanding of my nutritional status. Um, the fact is, very simple to take, and our surveys are anywhere from oh, five to seven minutes, sometimes longer if the person's thinking more. Um, the whole key, again, to engaging the patient and helping you is to make the process simple. Um, in this particular case, we try and drive everything out through email. We do push to mobile, and uh, Scott will talk much more about that technology in our partnerships, but we have a very deep tech team that has joined us recently uh, as a partner, and I think uh, we're not necessarily uh, the best, but I will tell you, uh, in our particular minds, we are. Basically, our workflow, EMR system, you'll see anything in gray is yours or the client's. So basically, we get a download file with 12 data fields in it, and then you log in and you see your real-time data. So when Mrs. Smith takes the survey, you can log on and you can start seeing the survey being populated. There's no wait for reports, month-end reports, etc. You can start getting trends immediately. Um, and then we do everything on the right, uh, data cleansing, survey, collection, etc. So the fact is, again, welcome to technology and welcome to the future. No paper and high completion rates and easy to use. So this is the way to start tracking patient experience. Uh, our dashboard uh, in, 
So this is just some quick snapshots of our dashboard uh, to help you, again, just focus quickly. You don't have a lot of time to slug through charts and start analyzing spreadsheets, etc. Focus in on key areas, easy to review charts, total practice, individual physicians. You can compare the providers. Uh, I'm going to skip through this fairly quickly just because we are going to show you a demo at the end uh, and walk you through what is available to you uh, in, at least in our tool. Um, compare locations, benchmark trend against uh, other OBs. And now I'm going to hand this off to Scott, who's going to start talking about the real future. Thank you, Doug, and thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, so this, this next section of what I'm going to focus on is um, has to do with patient engagement and how we are approaching this from a mobile perspective. Um, where's this? Where did we go? Okay. Um, so his, if you look at data that exists today, the, the one thing that, we, that we've done a lot of analysis on that we run into is that um, many practices talk to say, oh, that's not my population. You can't do this in a, in a digital environment because my population is, is not utilizing the technology. Um, and and there's, there's empirical data out there from many, many sources that show that smartphone penetration is, is at 70 percent in the U.S. Um, and this chart just shows you a, an example breakout of distribution across uh, age, age brackets. So the takeaway is to understand that, that your audience is accessing mobile technology, is accessing, accessing the, the web through tablets. Um, and therefore, we as providers and we as a, uh, as a technology company need to leverage that as a way to, to better communicate with patients because there's, there's a, a level of deeper connection that we can make in a mobile, mobile environment. Um, when you think of healthcare apps, uh, there's probably 40,000 healthcare apps that exist in the uh, Apple uh, App Store. Um, and this is a, a chart that shows kind of the breakout of where they exist. And one thing I think you'll recognize, and, and I'm sure many of you have used some of these apps, is they are specific to you as an individual tracking weight loss, tracking your, your exercise and so forth. The one thing that we've identified as a the gap in, in the marketplace is that these are tools that should be leveraged and, and data that should be collected to communicate with your provider from the patient's perspective so that you can share, you can share your, uh, your history and your experience and what you're doing to uh, manage your condition or manage um, a specific treatment. So our approach, and, and I'll read this from kind of top left to the bottom right, but our approach from the technology space is to quote unquote, own the visit. We, we want to leverage technology as a way to better prepare patients for more meaningful dialogue with their providers in a clinical setting. So we want to provide patients with the tools that they can use that are that, that create a frictionless or at least limit the amount of friction that exists in, in engaging with their provider in a clinical setting. But then we want to continually monitor uh, how well you as a provider are doing at meeting the needs of your patients. Um, and outside of the visit, give you the tools to be that kind of connectivity um, pipe. So I'll go through uh, a little bit of each of these sections here uh, in a minute and share with you some of the, the, uh, the app screenshots to show you how we are engaging throughout and uh, around this visit. So the tools that we provide, we've, we've done a lot of analysis to determine that we have to solve for one making this a patient-centric approach and making sure that the tools that we create put the patient first, but importantly, that the data that we collect is valuable and useful for you as a provider. Secondly, uh, we want to make sure that the tools that we provide, provide patients don't require you as a practice to uh, allocate existing or additional resources to make, this, to make this work. So there are existing apps out there that are, that are, uh, that are great at um, enabling you to interface with your patients if you're willing to, as a practice, install the software and leverage a uh, additional resource to kind of manage that communication and somehow port that information out and into your EMR. Our whole, pro again, our whole approach is to make that a seamless process. So um, on the business side of things, we want to make sure that we are 
uh, creating an environment where patients feel that they are um, uh, having a better experience at getting into the office. So um, on the economic side of the equation, we know that practices spend a significant amount of money um, on a regular basis for uh, appointment reminders. So if you're with Telebox or Phone Tree or whomever, you're paying a per transaction fee for appointment reminders. Included in the app is a, an appointment reminder system that is free to the patient and at no cost to the provider. Um, once we have engaged the patient, we want to provide them with a pre-visit checklist of things that they need to be working or think about or to discuss with their provider when they're in the clinical setting. We've been working very closely with uh, Diane Pitakavich and the National Patient Safety Foundation to identify kind of the, the three big questions that, that you should be prepared before a visit, the three things that you should ask during a visit, and then the three things that you want to, uh, to know post-visit. So that in a mobile environment, we can push that message. We'll, we know if a patient has an app and it's going to see you as an OB provider uh, and use the appointment set up through, um, uh, through the app, we know when that visit is occurring, so we can push message that patient prior to the visit of the things that they need to be thinking about. Um, after the visit occurs, because of the, the GPS technology and the, the fact that we have an idea of when the appointment is, we can push a, a simple survey to the patient to collect some important information about the experience in the office. And then finally, when you have a list of instructions that go to a, to a patient of things that they need to do when they're not in the office, we want to make that information uh, be readily accessible and push to the patient through the app. So I'll show you a couple um, examples here of some screenshots of the app uh, to give you an understanding of, of how we're trying to, uh, to better engage patients. So, and some of these are working titles, so, so bear with me. But the, the portal aggregator is the first component. We have, you know, we're very knowledgeable of the fact that uh, every EMR app there likely has their own patient portal, or you've installed some other software as a patient portal. Uh, meaningful use stage two is, is mandating that you prove that, uh, that you're getting utilization here. Uh, one of the challenges under the meaningful use is in this phase two, you've got to have 50% of your patients have access to, and five percent of your patients have to at least log in, download, and transmit some sort of information. One of the biggest challenges is that uh, this is a hugely fragmented market. And so if you as a uh, practice are utilizing uh, eClinical Works or Epic or whatever your EMR software is, and I as a patient then go to a normal orthopedic surgeon, they have a different system. They're using all scripts. And I, in order for me to access my patient portal, I've got to do that through two separate systems. So we've devised a way which the app that we provide for patients becomes the aggregator of all of those patient portals. So it's one centralized location for a patient to access information in all of their portals. Um, we, we completely understand and, and, and want to leverage the power of these portals because they do have sincere and significant value as a way for, for you as a provider to communicate with your patient. We just want to give the layer of uh, connectivity for the, for the patient that makes it easy and seamless to access all of their portals. Uh, the appointment reminder component, as I said, this uh, we're working on some technologies for um, appointment reminder cards that have a QR code uh, on printed on them. Uh, and I can we can talk. We have to answer questions about that at the end. But basically, enables us to uh, for patients who have the app to snap a picture of the QR code. It immediately uploads where you are, what the provider is, uh, and you can enter the appointment time. Once we have that appointment time into the app. It drops to your native calendar. So if you're using Google Calendar or the uh, iOS uh, calendar, those appointments drop into that format. So you're, you're not having to change the way in which you manage your, your daily calendar. But because it's through the app, we can then push message you when you get close to the appointment, that pre-visit checklist. Um, the, on the back side of the appointment, we have, we're building out uh, and continue to refine the treatment tracker, which is instructions that we that you have uh, that you want to give your patients. So if it is to, you know, rest for a certain amount of time and take a certain kind of medication, that list of instructions that oftentimes goes out to the patient on paper um, can be connected through the EMR and pushed to the patient via this app. And then most importantly, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do that I think helps really limit um, some risk for the provider is uh, give that 
that those instructions that go to the patient, we then ask, did you do this? Did you follow that instruction? Did you take this medication? And that information is then ported back into the, uh, the EMR through the patient portal. So you as a provider can now understand what the patient has done. And, and as Doug had referenced earlier, uh, I mean, there's empirical data out there showing uh, that, in, that more engaged patients are healthier, happier patients, and more importantly, uh, from the risk side of things, are less likely to sue. So um, our customer acquisition strategy for the patient side is to avoid the mass market um, approach of running a 30-second a, a commercial in Super Bowl for $3 million bucks, um, and push the, the app through the most trusted resource in healthcare, which is the provider. So by engaging our provider base with our patient experience survey platform, we give them the, uh, the tools necessary to say to your patient, hey, you should download this app. This is a way in which we can better connect with you and communicate with you. Uh, we, with any provider group uh, that, we, that we onboard under our platform, we drop a welcome kit, which has all of the tools necessary to kind of streamline that process. Um, you know, it's important that we understand where you as a provider understand that your patients are in this space leveraging technology at, a, at an adoption rate that is only increasing. And as the age of the patient population continues to shift along the continuum, it is and will become ubiquitous and pervasive. So we want to get out ahead of that and help you as providers begin to deeper engage your patients in this way. Um, one thing that, I, you know, I, I, I get on a soapbox a lot about it and, and have the opportunity to do speaking engagements around the country on this topic is that our platform or not, when you think about leveraging technology and making sure that you are using technology as a way to engage your patients, you've got to make sure that that process is patient-centered and that it solves a, an important problem, which is finding some issue within the experience and how you can leverage technology to make that a better experience. And I think we've, we've invested a lot of time money and resources in um, uh, building out these prototypes and betas and testing them with patients to understand where all those pitfalls are so that we can uh, streamline that whole process. So with that, I will turn it back over to Doug, and certainly we're here for questions and answers at the end. Thank you, Scott. That is uh, a great sight to the future. But the future is now, and it's here. Um, Again, pointing to pick at all scripts, next gen, uh, et cetera. Uh, our particular platform works with everyone and simply because we don't need to integrate. We simply leverage the data that's already there and we just ask for uh, easy download files. Um, with that, um, considering we're going to have questions at the end, I just thought I'd jump into a quick demo of what a dashboard would look like. And if I do this, we'll find out whether this works. <laughs> this would be a logon screen to your own pri private personal portal with us. This is not your portal. This is your login to access all the data with Metastatics that's coming from your patients. So <clears throat> if we just do the quick demo. It's this simple to log in, and we'll see if our server is up to speed. So this, this quick snapshot, I'm just going to spend about oh, five, six minutes here clicking around to show you how easy this is. You can pick whatever page you want to come up to, but if you look at key metrics of overall satisfaction, we're measuring in this particular case, here is uh, provider satisfaction. This is for the whole practice that you're seeing. And you scroll over to the end, and you start seeing uh, what we have in terms of uh, numbers. Uh, would they recommend the provider? Uh, that's interesting. Recommend the practice. These are the these are the key the key pieces. So again, okay, now it's reacting. Um, the ends in this particular case, this is, this is a real live practice, 213 uh, answers just from that month. And you see a dip here. And what this was, it was a practice that actually merged back in May. And this was where the 
physicians actually ended up arguing and disagreeing about some things. So suddenly you had 10 docs on one side and nine on the other, and they weren't having, uh, having a good time together. And guess what happened to their patient satisfaction? It went down. It was seen by the patients. It was seen in the staff, etc. So now we start looking at overall, explaining things well. Oh, that's you know interesting. That's not bad. That's a nice, stable mark. Spending enough time. Let's see how we're doing here. Mm, that's a little lower than we might expect. But we can go and click through any one of these things. Ability to reach the patient. Uh, the practice by phone. Well, you know, we're down at 80% here. And this isn't necessarily where you want to be. And this is obviously one of the issues that every practice has. Uh, how do we communicate with the patient? So as you click through all of these, this is, this is interesting. But then what we do is we make it very simple for you to start looking at individual providers and how they rank. So in this particular case, Betsy Ross sounds like she'd be a great OB physician, and we're just going to look at Betsy compared to the practice, and sure enough, Betsy's a high flyer. Um, Betsy's a great doc. I'll bet she explains things well. Yep, sure enough, now you know she's not necessarily doing what uh, everyone else is doing. So how can we learn from Betsy? What's Betsy doing that others uh, might not be? Is she spending enough time? Yep, she certainly is. So it's that simple. And let's try and find someone that might not be. Here, let's go to John Tyler. And again, your screen will look like this. And this is the way that you can quickly get uh, info about your doctors. OK, John is not necessarily doing what he needs to be doing. Um, how are people just overall recommending? Would they recommend him? Well, okay, so he didn't absolutely kill himself. But you know what? He's definitely lower than, than the practice average. So he's hurting you. So we can do this in any one of these. But I just wanted to show you then another measurement stat, which is now we compare your providers against each other. And sure enough, these people are doing great. And these people might be costing you referrals or retention. And those are important things to know. And it's not necessarily identifying people you want to get rid of. It's identifying people that are not necessarily behaving in the way you want. You can help them through behaviors. And this is where OB Consult comes into the picture. They can start identifying. Here, instead of focusing on everyone here, we're going to focus on these three or four docs. And we're going to help them with uh, the different issues that they might have. Uh, explaining things well. Our uh, solution is set up to correlate the metrics to those things in your practice, in your hospital, that are most closely tied to patient satisfaction. And thus, allowing you to home in on those things instead of guessing what they are. We'll know, we can help you, and we can help you identify who these people are and help you improve and give you specific things to work on, uh, possibly spending enough time. Again, this is all very simple. So as we come across um, then into the OB uh, spe specialty questions, we're also doing the same type of analysis. Oh, I need to get back out of. Uh, Okay, expected weight gain. Well, again, these dots were not doing such a great job back in October. And it was noted, and you can spot this trend immediately. And that enables you, as a practice, to start addressing things. Um, and then track is what you're doing working. You're not necessarily making decisions on single month data, but you can start seeing trends and places where you need to, uh, to work on for patient satisfaction. How well are you preparing them for their delivery expectations? Well, everything's above 90 there, but we much prefer to be over here than down here. Um, postpartum uh, prenatal care satisfaction. So the point is, we're, we're enabling you to have information at your fingertips, and then you can do what you want with it.
So overall, I just wanted to show you that. Then there, there is a risk assessment that we are working on, and I am going to press on this and show you something that we're doing with uh, OP Consult, which is uh, working on uh, this and getting it in our system and helping you identify uh, the risk inside of your uh, hospitals, inside of your practices, and OB Consult runs this survey, and sure enough, it's loaded in the dashboard here to make one-stop shopping, and you can start really focusing on managing your risk and uh, at the same time measuring your, uh, your providers. So with that, um, I'm going to go back to uh, the overall dashboard, and we're just going to go to general questions. If uh, if I get to, well, let me make sure I get to the right yeah. the right slide. If I'm on the, thank you, Chrissy. That's great. great. So remember that you can ask questions by simply clicking on the orange arrow at the top with the white arrow, the orange box with the white arrow, and you can type in in that box, and then a box will appear, and you can type your question, press send, and we'll answer as many questions as we can in the time uh, that we have left. And uh, you guys moved through this very quickly, so I think we need to give, I have a couple of questions, and I think there may be a couple more coming in. Um, but let's, let's start with this one. Uh, Doug and Scott, is this uh, geared to midwives and other health care providers or just physicians? It's geared to all providers within a practice or a hospital. So as we, as we set up a practice, we identify those that are, are uh, doctors, those are midwives, and those that are uh, assistants. And, and as we survey patients, um, the information that we pull from the EMR will tell us who they which provider they saw, and so we can rank uh, and report survey data by each of those providers. Great. Um, I'm seeing clinical questions on the risk assessment dashboard. How does that work? So the, and Peggy, you, you can probably answer it best. The, the risk assessment dashboard is the OB Consult created risk assessment dashboard. We've just integrated it with our platform. Right. So Doug had mentioned that, and one of the uh, this sort of takes it a step further. So as you start to look at both clinical practice as well as professional liability, it just seems a natural um, addition to it. So the physicians, the care providers, midwives, uh, nurse practitioners can take that. And again, you can start to look at um, on a yearly basis, every six months, how are they doing? How are your practitioners doing in terms of clinical quality and safety and professional liability? Are they up on the latest information? Yeah, I think okay. another another way to, to or something to add to that is, you know, if uh, from a practice or a hospital, if, if you know that 21% of your uh, provider base is at risk, um, wouldn't it be nice to know which 21%? And I think with the risk assessment tools and the patient experience surveying tools, we can help identify that. So, you know, in, in, I, this is what I love about the, the OB Consult model is that, you know, applying resources across the board isn't always necessary if there's only a percentage of the population of providers that are at risk. And I think the com combination of these tools clearly helps uh, you as a practice identify where, where um, some sort of intervention is needed. Thank you. I have another question. Um, what would the average cost of the patient experience survey tool be to a practice? So we, we provide that on a subscription basis, and it is uh, $35 per month per provider. It's as flat and as simple as we can get. Thank you. Um, how does it compare to the Press Ganey reports in terms of ease of use? Well, let, let's address two things with um, with Prescani and CGCAPS and HCAPS surveys. So, um, you know, one of the, the, the impetus to, to kicking this business off was the fact that uh, personally I had received these surveys um, after a minor knee surgery. And, and as a researcher and a technology person was looking at these things, there's, there's a big gap here. These questions that, that are being asked in the survey 
albeit some of them are interesting, there's not much that you can derive as a sense of value that would help you as a provider improve. So it's a bit like taking a square peg and trying to put it in a round hole. We're asking the, the you know, Prescani and the, the uh, CAP survey programs are asking the same survey instrument, utilizing the same survey instrument across all specialties. And you know, especially this group here in OB, this, your engagement and your interaction with a patient is very different than, than what happens in an orthopedic setting. And so therefore, we, we took the approach that specialty specific um, survey instrument is critical to answer the question a little further about the reporting side, um, you know, we don't subscribe to Prescani, so I can't I can't tell you all of what their data looks like. But we have been able to sit with a lot of providers who shared information with us, and um, we've we've gone a step further in, in versus just providing you with the Excel report that you see the mean and the median scores, and gone through the process of automating the reporting process. So much of what happens with Prescani reports in some practices. They come back, and there's somebody dedicated in the group that is supposed to make sense of the data in the Excel spreadsheets and maybe run some pivot tables, uh, apply some resources that either they're an expert in or maybe they're not. So we've taken the approach of doing all that analysis on the fly and, and delivering it in a uh, easy-to-use and intuitive dashboard. Great. Thank you. I have another question. Can you provide some information about the feedback from patients and providers on your patient experience survey? Sure. So, um, you know, one of the things that we constantly uh, evaluate is the, the the user, the patient's experience taking the survey. So, we we cast a pretty broad net when we kicked off with our first version of the survey by specialty, um, and continue to run uh, correlations and regression analysis to determine what are the questions that we can remove from the survey and what questions are we missing that most uh, points or that point towards useful information. So the survey itself is an iterative process, um, and we do want to make sure and be respectful of the fact that we, we optimize our completion rates by creating a survey that is uh, seem, you know, an easy-to-use process for the patient. Great. One addition to that is uh, something I failed to mention, which is we do have two open text fields in our survey as well, one after the overall practice questions, one after the individual provider enabling the patient to write anything they care to say is great or something they feel is missing, etc. So we do enable that free text, and that also is sent down uh, with the files. Good. I have another question. Do you house all of the data on your server so we do not have to worry about backing up the data on our servers? Yes, we do. Um, so it's a cloud services platform. Um, the data structure and the database structure is in HIPAA compliant environment where patient identity patient information is de-identified uh, and we report everything in aggregate. So yes, all of that is included in our in our platform. Great. Okay, here's another question. What kind of resources are necessary for my practice to have in place in order to use this survey platform? Our resources are limited. Sure. And and that's that's a great question, and exactly why we took this approach. Is we need a frictionless system for you as the provider. So we have on staff um, EMR integration experts and specialists who uh, do a lot of consulting with practices about which EMR to, to implement and then actually go through the implementation process. And we leverage those, that team to interface with the, with the practice once they've signed up with us so that we can create and, and structure a report that gets pulled from your EMR system on a regular basis and then gets sent to us and it's through a secure FTP. Uh, so we try to automate the whole process um, so that once we're set up and running, there's no resource utilization needed on the provider side. Great. Uh, let's see. What support is provided in helping a practice improve their metrics? So this is, this is the beauty of uh, some of the partnerships that we've established with OB Consult and another group called FC Healthcare Quality Consulting. So I'm assuming, uh, Peggy, this group is, is familiar with OB Consult, so they'll, they'll realize that what we do is we, we provide OB Consult with the, the data to show where improvement needs to take place, and then the best practices and all of the other consulting services that you provide 
get implemented at the practice to say, here's, the, here's what we can do uh, from OB-Consult's perspective to help you increase and reverse the trend of maybe some of these, uh, some of the downward trends in, in the reporting. Great. Okay, I think we might have one more question. Um, would this tool be useful in hospital physician practices? Yes, um, and we're, we're working with uh, a couple different groups right now uh, on the hospital side. So we've got a large not-for-profit community hospital, um, a hospital health system, uh, and an academic institution. So the answer is yes. We're, we're, you know, our, our focus is on the practice side of, of that. We're, we're, we're not in the business of doing the HCAPs um, uh, government survey. And, and in many cases, what we found is that the work that we do is the leading indicator for your HCAP scores. So it can be a precursor, an early warning signal to how you can start to make improvements so that the HCAP uh, government-specific mandated surveys are increasing. Good. So I think that's we've come to the end of our questions and the end of our webinar, and I would like to thank everybody for attending. I'd like to certainly thank Doug and Scott for a great presentation. Um, what I'm, what I'm also uh, seeing here, what you're seeing here, are our contact information. Should you need to reach us, and if you need to send a message to e either one of us, uh, including our Maggie Finkelstein, who's our healthcare attorney at OB Consult, you can see our email addresses and phone numbers right up on the screen. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. If you have, uh, I hope you'll be able to join us for next month. Uh, webinar, please uh, keep stay tuned, and we'll be sending out the alerts uh, again each month. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.